So they said that the jury did find that she did act in malice, that she what she did was an intentionally hurt Johnny Depp, which was not included in their insurance policy. You can't do anything willfully to harm someone and get sued by them and lose. So they're refusing to pay out her settlement with Johnny Depp and they're actually suing her. After losing the defamation case to Johnny Depp, Amber Heard is officially broke and apparently homeless, at least that's what she claims. She is also dealing with way more legal problems than she had bargained for as her insurance company has thrown her under the bus which has forced her to sell her home. Now that she has sold her home, everyone's curious about where she lives and questions if she can even pay Johnny at all. Is Amber Heard really homeless and broke, or is she simply faking it to avoid paying Johnny Depp? What's really happening between her and her insurance company? After the defamation case came to an end with Johnny emerging as the victor, Amber was ordered to give Johnny Depp $10 million as compensation for lost career possibilities and $5 million in impunity damages. The $5 million was later brought down to $350,000 because of the state statutory cap, making it $10,350,000. She was also awarded $2 million because of the defamatory statement made by Johnny's former lawyer, bringing the total to $8 million. For someone whose current net worth is $2.5 million, it is clear that Amber might not be able to pay Johnny Depp anytime soon. However, fans are speculating that her ex, Elon Musk, will come to her rescue, as he has in the past, and help her out with the settlement. This seems extremely unlikely as Elon has also had it with Amber, just like all of us, and won't be offering any financial help to her in the future or falling victim to her blackmailing anymore. During their time together, Amber and Johnny stayed in a penthouse that Johnny owned in Los Angeles. At the time, the pair were one of the wealthiest celebrity couples in Hollywood and would often travel from home to home. Johnny also allowed several of Amber's friends to live in their LA penthouse free of rent. And she was even caught cheating and bringing men into the building when they were still married. After they divorced, however, Johnny sold the penthouse and moved on from it, leaving Amber to find a new place to stay. In 2019, Amber secretly purchased a desert house in Yucca Valley, California. According to the outlet, the property wasn't in Amber's name but was paid for by a mysterious trust fund that was clearly related to her and covered by her insurance. The house was originally bought for $570,000, but because Amber had lost her insurance, she was forced to sell it at $1.05 million, which is nowhere close enough to the total amount she needs to cough up. During the trial, Amber Heard stayed in a Virginia luxury mansion where she paid $22,000 per month. This doesn't sound like something a broke person would do, right? The mansion came with a tennis court, a home movie theater, a spa, a swimming pool, eight bedrooms, and multiple elegant chandeliers with a golden hue and several crystal drops that decorated the entire house. Despite living in such a lavish mansion, Amber's lawyers still declared that she was struggling too much financially to pay Johnny. She seemed to be living large for someone who was struggling. At the time, Amber's lawyer Elaine went on the Today Show and said that Amber had excellent grounds to appeal the verdict. And when asked if she would be able to pay the damages, she replied, no, absolutely not. Is she able to pay a $10.4 million judgment? Oh no, absolutely not. After the case was concluded, Amber was spotted in the Hamptons as her lawyers filed for a mistrial, claiming that the jury's verdict was inconsistent and irreconcilable. According to OK Magazine, Amber's lawyers had tried to take Johnny back to court, filing on the basis that one of the jury members was absent from the panel, stating that her due process had been compromised. However, Johnny's attorneys fired back, claiming that Amber's team had no legitimate basis to set aside the jury's decision in any respect, and that the verdict was well supported by the overwhelming evidence. Many were upset with Amber for trying to pull such a pointless card. Some went online and tweeted their disapproval. Both sides were aware of the issue with juror age and approved him. A fan commented, Amber Heard is using the court system to continue to harass Johnny Depp. Her lawyers were incompetent, no match for Johnny Depp's team. Someone else said, she claims she's broke while partying in the Hamptons and eating food that we all wish we could afford. The court should seize all her assets and make her explain how she's paying for all this when she owes millions and is being sued by her insurance company. And let's not forget her legal trouble with Australia. Amber Heard thinks she's entitled and above the law. She is living in a dream world, and by the time she's done, she'll be a broken down mess. It's time to wake up Amber Heard. Amber has also found herself in a bigger mess as her insurance company is suing her and asking not to be forced to pay her any more money. So they said that the jury did find that she did act in malice, that she what she did was an intentionally hurt Johnny Depp, which was not 
included in their insurance policy. You can't do anything willfully to harm someone and get sued by them and lose. So they're refusing to pay out her settlement with Johnny Depp and they're actually suing her. According to Law & Crime Magazine, her insurance company, New York Marine and General Insurance Company, is now suing her on the claim that they are not obliged to give her any more money than they already have. Apparently, the company was not only covering her when she defamed Johnny Depp in her Washington Post op-ed, but also when Johnny filed his suit against her. And when the jury had passed the verdict against her in Johnny's case, it was clear that she consciously defamed him, something that even the First Amendment didn't have an allowance for. And, because of this, New York Marine filed a lawsuit against Amber on the grounds that the company should not be responsible for paying for these damages. According to the state code, an insurer is not liable for a loss caused by the willful act of the insured. Although the insurance company was covering her legal defense, they also claimed that they only agreed to continue covering her legal fees while she was being defended by attorney Cameron McEvoy. But when he withdrew from the case in late 2020, New York Marine claimed that they did not approve the attorney change and so should not be made to pay her remaining legal fees. New information has also been revealed that there is another lawsuit being issued in connection with this situation, as yet another insurance company, Travelers Commercial Insurance Company, is suing New York Marine for trying to make them pay half of Amber's cost. For these reasons, Amber is stranded and has nowhere else to turn. She has zero jobs lined up as even Warner Bros removed her from Aquaman 2, and no one wants to help her except for her dear friend the infamous Eve Barlow, who was spotted with her a few weeks ago in Israel. Rumors are saying that they might be dating or even possibly married because they were spotted wearing matching rings. People are saying it was a wise move to sell her secret mansion even though she still has a long way to go, while others are refusing to believe that saying she is just trying to pull a PR stunt with the pictures of her looking depressed and suffering. Someone had commented that, I'm sure the woman that had a baby with the richest man in the world is not exactly hurting for cash. I'm sure she's moving to upgrade. She was staying in that house she rented for $22,000 a month during the trial and flying around in a private jet that looked like her baby daddy's Elon. Others are saying she has some secret money stashed away somewhere that she can use to settle Johnny if she really wanted to. She sold her house only to prevent JD from seizing it. She's got a lot of money from the divorce settlement, Aquaman 2, L'Oreal contract, interviews, survivors events, and many more. On the other hand, all her legal costs were paid by Traveler's insurance company. She never donated what she pledged either, and the story that she spent all her money on fine wines and a high lifestyle was part of a PR campaign during the trial when they realized they were going to lose the case. I've heard some lawyers say that Traveler's will also pay for her appeal. Don't jump to conclusions, she has more hidden money than all of us put together. The issue with her insurance companies is not the end of her legal problems. She still hasn't redeemed the pledge of a $7 million divorce settlement she made to the charity organizations, the American Civil Liberties Union and Children's Hospital Los Angeles. All hope is not lost for her, as she still has an opportunity to make a few million from the gut-spilling revenge memoir she is soon to release, which would certainly help her handle the millions she owes Depp. Publishing companies are trying to sign a deal with her for this highly anticipated book, with some even offering up to $15 million. Hopefully, with this, she can finally settle Johnny and begin to think about fulfilling her promises to the charity organizations. But now that she has sold her secret mansion that she had hoped she would be able to raise her daughter, could she really be homeless? What are your thoughts on this topic? Do you think Amber Heard is truly homeless and that she will be able to pay Johnny Depp soon? Let us know in the comments below. And if you thought that this video was scandalous, wait until you see this next one.